Terry C. Washington, trustee of Faith Community Baptist Church. And we would like to say on behalf of us, welcome to our visitors, both present and viewing from afar. Uh, today's service will go as follows. We will open up with uh, devotion from our devotion team. Uh, following that, we'll be offering by our very own brother, Mike Garley. Afterwards, will be the altar prayer by myself, Terrence C. Washington. And following that, will be another selection by our very own First Lady, Sister Garley. Afterwards, will be our main attraction, a word of God through our very own Pastor A.D. Garley. Thank you. I learned this morning that there was uh, an assassination attempt upon former President uh, Trump. Amen. Uh, let me share this with you before we leap into the word um, in that regard. Uh, for certainly there are many individuals um, who have been deceived uh, purposefully by our politicians. Um, it used to be an argument of ideas um, and those with the best ideas would persuade, persuade the masses uh, to come their way and vote this way or that way based on ideas. Yes. Uh, this new political party, uh, this new generation, uh, is no longer about ideas. They feel that they have what is best for us and therefore they do not need to persuade us based on ideas. Uh, they simply need to make us afraid of the opposing party. Mm. Uh, if this party gets in, then we're doomed. If that party gets in, then we're goners. Uh, we can't make it. Uh, but I want you to understand this. God's got it all in control. Uh, I've lived long enough to exist under Republicans as well as Democrats. Mm. Uh, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. Can I get with it? Amen. Uh, God has taken care of his children under Democrats as well as under Republicans. Mm. Amen. Amen. Uh, but there is an attempt to keep the masses angry at one another, mm. uh, where we are no longer arguing uh, the validity of our ideas, mm. but um, we have come to a place where individuals have been so deceived into believing that only one side has all the right answers, therefore we will do whatever by hook Come on, hook, uh, to make sure I guy gets in. Uh, so if it means that we would kill the person of the other party, then that will do. If it means that we've got to turn people against one another uh, for having different ideas, then we'll do that. If it means that we would assassinate individuals' character, then we'll do that. Uh, if we would call everybody who believes differently than us, uh, a racist or a bigot or whatever other name that we can come up with to describe them, then we'll do that. And you'll see individuals who are no longer arguing over ideas, but they're trying to convince you and I that the other team is evil. Mm -hmm. uh, therefore, by any means necessary, we got to win. Oh, yeah. And I stand today to declare that there is a reason why they follow Jesus. Amen. That leads me to the message for today. Come on, uh, There is only one who has the answer to all of our dilemmas and all of our crises, all of our pains. There's only one who can deliver us from it all, and it's not an uh, individual with an R behind their name. Nor is it an individual with a D behind their name, but uh, it is the Son of the living God, the Savior of heaven and earth. It's He alone who is able to ensure uh, that life will be one with everlasting uh, living in heaven. And so we all turn our attention and our hearts towards Him. Uh, yes, we should vote. 
Uh, yes, we should listen to the argument of ideas and uh, the individual who would align themselves closely with what we believe, uh, where we're headed, our values, our biblical worldview. Uh, we ought to lean in that particular direction based on, on the ideas that are presented to us. Uh, we ought to go to the polls. We ought to cast our votes. Amen. Amen. Uh, but this idea of any means necessary in killing other individuals and not getting along with one another. You got one family member who was a Republican, another family member who's a Democrat, and they feel like they don't talk to one another. Uh, that's foolishness. <laughs> Amen. Because neither one of them going to pay your bills. Neither one of them going to do anything for you. Amen. Neither one of them, amen, going to visit you when you're in the amen. hospital. Amen. Unless you happen to be friends with one of them. Amen. They're not coming to see you on a personal basis. Amen. So don't destroy your life. Amen. Don't head down the wrong path. Amen. Over foolishness. Um, so we ought to, uh, once again, turn ourselves back to understanding what is the ideas, what are the principles, the foundation on which these individuals stand. And if their arguments don't stand up to reason and logic, amen, uh, we're not going to vote for them just because they kill off the other side, whatever side it is that they're trying to kill off. Um, Amen. We need to get a candidate, amen, who stands for what we stand for, and then amen. we'll vote for that candidate. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. Um, amen. But if they don't stand for what we vote for, we're not going to stand vote for that individual just because they're the only man left. Mm -hmm. um, so we are to dismiss this foolishness to where individuals, I understand that the individual who attempted this is dead, I, I, from what I gathered. A, a life that is cut short over foolishness uh, because somebody convinced him that the other side is evil and so we all be careful uh, over these types of things amen uh, if your loved one has a different view a different ideology than you you keep on loving him amen, amen. Right. don't you dare Stop loving somebody because they think differently. Because the truth of the matter is that we all think a little different from one another. Amen. It's hard to find two people who think exactly alike. Just ask husband and wife. Can I get a witness? Uh, so we all think a little different than one another. And as we start not talking to folk because they think a little different from us, Amen. we find ourselves talking to ourselves in the mirror. Um, so we ought to be careful Amen. with that sort of linear thinking or uh, circular reasoning, if you would. Um, amen, amen. It's a good day today. Amen. God is good and he's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be honored. Amen. Amen. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord, for my Lord. And I promise him that I, I will serve.
Revolution Band. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Worship Him, worship Him. 
worship Him, oh, worship Him, bow down and worship. So come and bow down. So come and bow down. Most Heavenly Father up above, we come this morning, Lord Jesus. Once again, we want to thank you for keeping us all last night, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we want to pray for those that was the president, the former president that was shot. We want to pray for him and his family, Lord, and the innocent bystander that got killed and injured during this time, Lord. We ask that you'll touch that family, Lord, through they, going through their bereavement right now, Lord, because right now, Lord, we need you because there's no one else but you that can solve the problem that's going on there, Lord. Yes, Lord. And Lord, we just ask and look forward to you for all our help which comes from you, Lord Jesus. And we look for a better day, Lord. For we ask that you touch this world, Lord. Keep your hand upon it. I know you can't take your hand off of it because your hand is the world, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you and just ask that you touch our service this morning. This morning, and bless the pastor who's going to bring us the word. We ask all this in your loving son, Jesus Christ's name. Let the church say, Amen. I love you, Lord. And I leave my voice to worship you, oh my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what
Heavenly Father, we come this morning, Lord, thank you for those that's able to give. And Lord, we appreciate their, 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 their gift. And Lord, we ask that you bless them in a tremendous way, Lord, that they can pour out them a blessing that they can't even receive, Lord. They like looking, where is I'm going to put all this? I got all this. You know where to put it, Lord. We ask you just bless them tremendously, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we just ask that you just continue to just keep your hand up on the world, Lord. And Lord, and we ask that you, your, the money that's been taken up in you for your glory and your glory only, Lord, that you'll be benefited from it. And we ask all this in your loving Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Let us now bow our heads in altar prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to get here safely, Lord, in our vehicles, God. We thank you, Lord, for the breath you've given us, Lord. We thank you for the salvation you've given us, Lord. Thank you for saving us, Father God. Thank you for saving us from ourselves, Lord. Father God, we ask for the forgiveness of our sins, Lord, and those who sin against us. We pray, Father God, for your grace and mercy upon us, Father God. We pray, Lord, that we continue to grow in our walk with you, Father God, that we continue to receive the word, Lord, and continue to grow in our walk, Lord, that we continue, Lord, to grow our lights, God, and continue to be the shining light, Lord, in, in the midst of darkness, Father God. Heavenly Father, we ask right now that you lift up the family of the victim who was killed yesterday, Lord, and the shooting, Father God, that happened, Lord, at a rally. Everybody talks about the leaders who were threatened, but nobody's talking about the innocent bystander who was killed, Lord. Someone lost their father. Someone lost a brother, Lord. Someone lost a friend, Father God. So we just ask right now, Lord, you place your hands upon them, Lord. Yeah. Continue, Lord, to place your hands upon all the families, Lord, who've lost loved ones, Lord, to senseless violence, Father God. We ask right now, Lord, that you heal our world, Lord, that's filled with a lot of violence, Lord, on both sides, Father God. So much division going on right now, Lord. We just ask for nothing but healing, Father God. Healing on our hearts, Lord. Healing for all the people who are just angry right now, Lord. Father God, we ask and pray that we, as Christians, Lord, as followers, you, Lord, continue to be examples, Lord. Examples, Lord, of what happens when we turn our lives over to God. And know that no matter what's going on on earth, we know that God has the final say. God, you've won so many battles in the past, Lord. This is nothing to you, Father God. And so we pray right now, Lord, that we just continue, Lord, to keep close to the word, Lord. Keep the word in us, Father God. We pray, Father God, that we continue, Lord, to love one another, Lord. So much hate going on right now, Lord, towards one another, Lord. We just pray for, for love, Lord. You preach about it, you say about agape, Lord. And I just pray, Father God, that we can learn to, to display that more, Lord, to display that amongst one another, but to also display that among those who don't know you, Father God. We pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, that you will bless our pastor, Lord, as he comes forward with the word, Lord. Father God, continue to bless him and his family, Lord. Bless our church home, Lord. Continue to bless our members, Father God. Continue to heal us, Lord. Heal all of us, Lord, who may be aching in pain, Lord, physically or aching in pain emotionally, Lord. A lot of us are going through things that no one knows about, Lord, that we keep pretty close to the chest, Lord, but you know about it, Father God. And we pray, Lord, that you will continue to heal each and every one of our hearts, Lord. Heal our minds, Father God. Heal us, Lord, and help us to be stronger, Father God. Help us right now, Lord, to focus on the word that's going to be presented to us, Lord, from our great pastor, Father God. And pray, Father God, that we use it as food for the soul, Lord, that we can walk out of here feeling different than when we came in, Father God. We walk out feeling a lot better, Lord, than when we came in, knowing that everything is going to be all right, Lord. We pray, Father God, for your for your Holy Spirit, Lord, to cover us, Lord, to cover our loved ones, Father God. Yes. We pray, Father God, for the Holy Spirit to cover the cover of our family members, Lord, even our family members who don't know God, Lord. We pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit can cover them as well, Lord, and maybe, Lord, that can bring them closer to you, Lord. For those, Lord, who, who, who've had a relationship with you, Lord, who maybe fell off the wagon, Lord, on the way, Lord, we pray, Father God, that they can restore, we can restore our, our faith in you, Lord, faith in the word, Father God. We ask right now, Lord, that you continue, Lord, to, 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 to bless this nation, Father God, despite all the craziness going on in it, Lord. Continue, Lord, to heal this world, Lord. Protect our leaders, Lord, whichever out their own, Lord, just protect our leaders because they're the one that has to lead this eventually, Lord. So, Father God, we just pray, Lord, again, Lord, for your protection, Father God, and for your healing hands, Lord. And we just pray also right now, Lord, we just get our minds focused on receiving the word, Lord, so that we know how to apply it to our lives, Lord, and also show it others how to apply it to their lives as well, Lord. And we just ask and pray in all these things, Lord. God bless our nation. God bless our pastor, Lord. And just know, Lord, we love you, Lord. And we just pray and ask in all these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.
today we want to answer that same question, why they followed Jesus, from the perspective of this uh, conversation that Jesus had with Nathaniel. Um, as he would turn and look at Nathaniel, um, there is a familiarity that is in the air. Um, maybe you've experienced it at some point or another in your life um, where you either saw someone or someone saw you uh, and they looked at you in such a way that the other individual would ask the question, do you know me from somewhere? Mm -hmm. Have you ever been there? Have you ever yes. witnessed an occasion of that nature? Mm -hmm. Uh, it might be an individual that you had gone to high school with. Uh, uh, it might be somebody that at some point or another in one of your uh, jobs you worked with somebody uh, and uh, you lost touch along the way, but you see them and you recognize them and they become familiar and you want to know, do you know me? Do I know you? Um, that's an occasion that we have here in the text. Nathaniel um, would cry out, he would ask the Lord this question in that 48 verse, how do you know me? I mean, Jesus is talking about stuff that rings true with Nathaniel. It rings true to such an extent uh, that he would say, how do you know me? I know that you know something about me because the stuff that you just said about me is true. Jesus would look at him and he would start to describe him. And so I want to share with you three aspects of Jesus um, and his familiarity with you and I. Um, Jesus knows our past, and it's, I'm going to lay this out real simple format. Jesus knows our past, Jesus knows our present, and Jesus knows our future. Um, past, present, and future, Jesus knows. He looks at Nathaniel, and as he looks at him coming and moving in his direction, he says to him, Behold an Israelite <coughs> indeed, in whom is no deceit. He talks about him in relationship uh, to his connection to uh, the children of Israel, but he also talks about him in relationship to his character. Um, he says, you are an Israelite indeed. Uh, he stunned him. He who would be a future disciple, a follower of Christ, he would, with his first words, take him back. Um, he would look at him and describe him as a genuine student of the Torah, of the law. A righteous Jew who had been taught to live in accordance uh, with the Word of God. And so he calls him an Israelite indeed. But not only in name, but in character as well. He says, within whom there is no God. Uh, no, no, in other words, no deceit. No hypocrisy, no trickery, no cunningness. Uh, here is one who is sincere in who he is. Uh, as some would say, what you see is what you get with Nathan. Uh, he's an honest fellow uh, who would come to Jesus. He earlier asked the question that we discovered and uh, that we looked at on last week. Uh, can anything good 
Um, and here and now he is face to face with that same Jesus that he would inquire about as he faced him. Um, Jesus would start talking to him, telling him about himself, and it rings true in his heart, and he knows himself, he knows who he is, and so immediately, of course, he would want to know, since I don't know you, how do you know me? Uh, did we attend some function together? I mean, where in the world would you have found out about my origins, uh, found out about uh, my lifestyle. Uh, Jesus would dig a little bit further as he would inquire about how Jesus knew him. He says, before Philip called you, before he went and got you from where you were, while you were sitting underneath the fig tree, he says, I saw you, I laid eyes on you. Even though physically I was not in the same territory as you. Uh, yeah. Yes, we did not share the same space uh, and time, uh, yet I saw you. Now, my brothers and sisters, that's something to get an individual's attention with. When you start talking about them in familiar terms and ways and, and you weren't there. You didn't grow up together. You did not hang out together. You don't have the same friends and associates with one another. And yet, and still, this individual knows some personal stuff about you. And it makes you want to wonder who they are. My brothers and sisters, what Jesus was sharing with him in a roundabout way is that I have what theologians would call omniscience. Yes. In other words, Jesus Christ, uh, yes, was letting it be known that I know all things. Uh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's not anything that's outside of my purview. I know everything. That's why he says, when you were sitting under the fig tree, I saw you. Yes, I did not have to be there to see you. Mm, catch this, because this is going to help you on tomorrow. When you're sitting alone by yourself, yes, uh, and you're wondering at times in your life, uh, yes, do God see me? Did God know what it is that I am going through down here? Yes, uh, when I'm bumping into walls, when I'm facing uh, uh, hard decisions in life, uh, when I'm traveling up the rough side of the mountain, uh, does God know what I've got to go through? Yes, yes uh, when i got to deal with difficult days and dark nights, uh, yes, uh, uh, do, do he know me? Do he know what I'm going through? Do he know the struggles that I face in life? I stop by to tell you that God knows all about you. He knows your past. You've been struggling with a past. Uh, you're wondering about past decisions. Uh, yes, you're wondering about, uh, yes, defeats along the way in life. You're wondering about, uh, yes, where you went wrong and where you stumbled and fell in life. Uh, you're wondering about the hurts that you've experienced in life. Yes, I want you to know that God knows your past. Later in the fourth chapter of this same Gospel of John, Jesus will have a conversation that he initiates with a woman at a well. And it's there in this conversation that he has with this woman at the well uh, that he would progress to this particular point where he would tell this woman to go and bring your husband back to me. Mm. Well. Remember, Jesus is our mission. Um, he is the son of God. Yes, yes. And as he tells this woman to bring her husband back, uh, 
she would confess, I don't have a husband. And Jesus then would say something to her as in like fashion as he did here with Nathaniel. He says, you have said correctly, yes, because you didn't have five. And the one that you're living with now is not your husband. And this woman, yes, uh, she would deal with Jesus from the same perspective that Nathaniel did. How do you know about my past? You know stuff about me that I have not told nobody. That woman came to the well around noon. That was not the normal time for coming to the well. It was a hot time of the day. She came to the well, yes, at an abnormal time when the other women who would come and collect water were not there. Perhaps she was hiding from them. She didn't want to run into nobody who knew her business, knew her past. And yet she runs into this man at the well and he still knows her past. My Lord, thank you. He knows what she has been through. Yes. And, and, and because he knew her, she decided that she could trust him with what he knew about her. There's some folk who can't wait to find out what's going on in your life. Well, well, Lord. Somebody heard the story about the three preachers who decided to go on a little fishing expedition. Yes, uh, it was a Baptist, uh, it was a Catholic uh, priest. Uh, yes, uh, and uh, it was a Lutheran. And uh, they went in and they started talking while they were fishing. Yes, uh, they said, well, there's nobody out here but us. Uh, yes, uh, uh, we ought to unload some stuff. Get some stuff off our chest and stuff that we uh, can't talk to other folk about. Uh, we ought to share with one another and ease our burdens. And they start talking to each other. Uh, and uh, one would share, the Catholic said, well, you know, I got a problem with drinking. I get into the communion and you know and I have me a couple of extra sips. <laughs> Can I get a witness? All right. All right. Um, and then the Baptist would say, uh, I had a few problems uh, with gambling. I like the ponies. And then the Lutheran, he said, well, my problem is gossip. And I can't wait to get back to town to tell everybody about you. <laughs> <laughs> she met a man who knew all about her. And yet, Instead of running away from him, she ran closer to him. Yes, thank you. Lord. And she would run back into town to gather up for and say, Come and see a man who knew everything about me. Not to hurt me, but to help me. Yes, yes not to pull me down, but to pull me up. Mm -hmm. I want you to know God knows your past. You want to know why it is that that woman at the well followed Jesus because he knew her in a deep way. The reason why Nathaniel would follow Jesus because he knew him in a deep way. God knows you and I. Not only do he know our past, but he knows our present. He knows what we think. Matthew 9 and 4 says, But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? Mm. He knows 
our present. Isaiah 37 and 28 would say this, but I know your dwelling place. You're going out and you're coming in and your rage against me. He knows what we think. He knows what we believe. John 10 and 14, he says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and am known by my own. He says in 27 of that same 10th chapter, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Yes, they followed him because Jesus knew them. Old folk used to say it like this, he knows. He made us and he knows us. He knows us better than we know ourselves. Nahum. In the Old Testament, chapter 1, verse 7, says it like this. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who trust in him. Yes, uh, he knows who believe in him. He knows what we need. Matthew 6 and 8 says this. Therefore, do not be like them, the carnal he speaks of. For your father knows the things you have need of before you even ask him. God wants us to come to him and ask. He says, uh, yes, ask and you shall receive. Yes, uh, but my brothers and sisters, he wants us to ask because that is a part of relationship communicating and talking one with another, but he does not us to ask him because he don't know. He already knows all about our struggles. We're not in it by ourselves. When those disciples would find themselves in the middle of a storm, a storm tossed sea, they would run to Jesus who was asleep in the hinder part of the boat. Yes, they would come and wake him up. Yes, they would cry out to him, carest thou not that we perish? It's not because Jesus did not know what they were going through. But Jesus wanted to give them an opportunity to learn a valuable lesson in their lives. And he gives us the same opportunity to learn that same lesson in our own lives. When we think that, that our lives are rocking back and forth, tossed by the waves and the seas of life, and we, we suppose that perhaps God does not care. Yes, that mama's in the hospital. Perhaps God does not care uh, that I've just lost my job. Perhaps God do not care that I've got to go through what I'm going through. Uh, yes, uh, sleepless nights and long days. Uh, perhaps God. You'll get up, stand up on that boat and say, peace, be still. And the wind would stop blowing. The waves would stop beating upon the ship. And they would stand uh, there just amazed. What manner of man is this that even the wind uh, and the sea doesn't obey him? They came to Jesus. They followed him because Jesus knows our past. He knows our present. Knows what we're going through. Yes, Lord. And he's able to make a way out of nowhere. He's able to handle our situations. Uh, yes, if we would but trust him. Trust and never doubt. Surely the Lord will bring us out. On many occasions, individuals would come to Jesus and he would say, your faith has made you whole. If we would but trust him to have it under control, trust him to know all about it, trust him. Uh, we would go to a doctor, a physician, um, would tell them about what hurts, 
where the pain is, the right knee, left knee. We tell them all about it. Because we figure that their years of going to medical school, well. their internship, yeah, well. yes, uh, their experience of practicing medicine had given them a clue uh, that they would know how to treat, what medicines to prescribe uh, based on our situation and our uh, uh, x-rays, uh, yes, our MRIs and all of that, uh, they ought to have some idea, a clue of how to deal with it. I want to share, I want to introduce you to a great physician. Emma. Yes, uh, yes. his name is Jesus. Yes. Yes. yes, he knows what you're going through. He knows your ups and downs. He knows your situations in life and he knows how to treat Yes, he has more medicine in the hem of his garment than any pharmacy has on its shelves. Thank you, Lord. Yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, Jesus knows our past, our present, and Jesus knows our future. Not only does Jesus know uh, what I've done, good decisions, bad decisions, right direction, wrong direction, but he knows also the way in which I should go. Amen. Jesus is our personal GPS system. All right. Come on, Pastor. Yes, he can get us safely to our destination from earth to glory. Yes, he's a mighty good leader. Yes, he can get us uh, there safely. Yes, if we turn when he say turn, uh, Yes, uh, if we go straight when he say go straight, uh, he can get us where we need to be in life. Yes, yes, yes. Jeremiah 29, 11 says it this, this way, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Mm. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. God knows the way for me. God knows the way for you. Yes. My brothers and sisters, he knows how to get us to where we need to be. 2 Timothy 2 and 19 makes it clear that the Lord knows those who are his. Romans 8, 29 and 30 says, For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, he glorified. Now I said earlier that God knows your future. Yes. The pathway to your future is right there in the text. Yes. Listen. Because not only did he know you in advance because he's just omniscient and he knows everything uh, from beginning to end. Uh, yes, the first and the last. He knows everything in between. Uh, yes, but more than that, he has the directions of how to get you to where you ultimately need to arrive at in life. He says, those he predestined, he called. Watch this. Those whom he called, he justified, which means declared righteous. And for those of us who are concerned about our past that has tripped us up and messed yes, us up, yes. Come on, Pastor. God says, I have the answer to your past in what I know about your future. He says that 
I can declare you righteous if you would but come to me just as you are, weary, wounded, and sad. You can find in him a resting place, and he will make you glad. He says, those whom I justify, I'll glorify. And we know that glorification is the final destination for the believer. Yes, when Jesus Christ got up from the dead with all power and heaven and earth in his hands, uh, yes, uh, he no longer limited himself, uh, yes, to the frame uh, of a human body. Uh, yes, uh, he played uh, by the rules. Uh, yes, he allowed himself uh, to be a man amongst people. Uh, yes, uh, but after he had gone by way of the grave, uh, yes, and got up, in his resurrected body. Uh, yes, he would enter into the room uh, with the disciples without using a door. Yes, uh, he would come into their presence uh, with his glorified body. Yes, yes, yes. yes uh, my brothers and sisters, what I'm getting at, uh, yes, uh, God would change us, uh, yes, from these terrestrial bodies to celestial bodies. Uh, yes, some glad morning when this life is over, yes, we'll God will give us a new name over in glory. Yes, uh, yes, and, and it's mine. There, there's a whole lot of folk who share my name down here. Yes, even my full name. Uh, yes, I, there, there's a junior, there's a second out there. Yes, uh, who shares my complete name. Can I get a witness? Yes, I've I, I, I got cousins who share my name. Yes, I, but God's got a new name for me over in glory. Yes, and it's mine. Oh, my. Yes, and when you call my name in heaven, yes, all eyes are going to be on me because that's my name. It's my name and mine alone. Yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, when I get to heaven, mm -hmm. yes, uh, some of our forefathers, uh, yeah, they had some raggedy shoes. Yes, some of our forefathers had to go through some stuff. Yes, they yes uh, but they were able to sing, yes, uh, Zion songs, uh, yes, because they knew when I get to heaven, I'm going to put on my shoes, yes, and walk on. to go through what we go through down here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, Nathaniel looks at Jesus. He says, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Yes, uh, Nathaniel made a decision right then and right there. He said, I have decided to follow Jesus. Yes. yes. Though none go with me, I still will follow. Yes. He made a decision to follow Jesus. Yes, because he realized that he is the teacher. He's the master. He is the king of Israel. He realized that he is the son of God. Yes, he realized that he has the Why did they follow Jesus? Uh. They followed Jesus because he knows so much about us. He knows everything about us. Right. Come see a man. Come see a man that told me everything that I ever did. Come see a man. Let Jesus fix it for you. He knows just what to do. So whenever you pray, you just 
Let him have his way. He'll fix it for you. Because he knows just what to do. So as we stand on our feet, doors of the church are open. I have decided right. to Amen. All right. Well, 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 you guys stand with me here real quick. Amen. Jesus knows your situation, your circumstances that are unique to you. What it is that you face from one day to the next. He knows all about it. He knows how to work with it. He knows how to fix it. He knows how to give you a hug when you need a hug. He knows how to prop you up when you're feeling a little weak. He knows you. He knows how to deal with you and your unique personality in life. Amen. And so if you just trust him with everything that you experience and face in life from one day to the next, the Lord can see you through. So just trust him. Every day is not a walk through the garden of roses and all of that. But I tell you this, that if you trust him, he'll be there with you no matter what it is that you face in life, whether it's a good day or a bad day. Whether you're up or down, he'll be there with you yes. in the midst of it all. Yes. So just trust in him. Yes. So let us pray. Amen. Amen. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you would bless Monique and Kamisha, Lord, in their confession of faith, as they would trust you with their lives. Lord, we pray that they would follow you wholly and deeply, Lord, that they would Take it to the next level, Lord, that they would search your word diligently, that you would give them direction and guidance, Lord, yes. that you would help them with the decisions that they make, Lord, yes. that they would come to you before they make the decision and not after they've already made it, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to be a light all around them, Lord, that you would shine in their heart, Lord that your glory, Lord, would rest upon them, Lord. We pray that you would fill them with the power of your Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord, that you would just continue to bless them, Lord, day after day and night unto night, Lord. Let your angels be a fence all around them each and every day, Lord, as Satan would come against them, Lord, as Satan would try to trip them up, Lord, we pray. Lord, that you would be there for them. Lord, that they would just continue to hold on to your unchanging hand. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We prepare to go down <clears throat> from this place. God has smiled on me. me. He, he has set me free. Take a look at it. Someone in front of you or behind you on the side of you. Just take a moment in your own way. Just ask that God would touch that individual and bless them. Don't worry about praying for yourself. If you pray for somebody else, somebody else will pray for you. Just in a few words, just in a sentence, ask God's blessing that individual. How we thank you now, Lord, as we pray one for another. Lord, let your blessings rest upon us. Lord, you heard the prayers and petitions of each individual, Lord, as they would come to you and ask, Lord, a blessing for their neighbor, in front of them, behind them, on the side of them. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would just allow their steps to be ordered by you, that you would allow them to prosper, that you would allow them to feel the goodness of your presence in their lives, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for all that you've done yes, and all that you're going to do. Yes, the best is yet to come. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, Present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. 
to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let us all say in song. Amen. Amen.